Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of... Of the Yukon. Up, up, up. Yes, exploded up to eight times normal size. That's what happens to Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice because they're shot from guns. That's why these choice, flavor rich premium grains are so crisp and tender. They're shot through and through with swell, nut-like flavor, too. And as Mother knows, wheat or rice shot from guns makes a deluxe family breakfast that's economical, that's easy to fix as falling off a log. Just pour out a bowlful and add some fruit and milk or cream. And yummy, you're back for more. Just try them. Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat for a real breakfast treat. John Day and Glenn White had become partners in a claim on Nugget Creek, not far from Dawson City. John was an old sourdough, quiet and easygoing, while Glenn, about 30, was impatient and quick-tempered. Yet they seemed to get along fairly well during the months when they were working the claim, up to the time when they made a strike in the fall. Then, against John's better judgment, Glenn wanted to sell out and hit for the States. They sat in the Silver Cafe one evening discussing the matter. Look, before the winter sets in, we got the chance to take what we made and sell out for a good price. Then we can get to the States on the last boat that sails the end of the week. Now, Glenn, just take it easy. Why sell out a good claim? I've been up here since the gold rush started, and I sort of want to stay. But I don't want to stay, John, like I've told you before. We can get a good price for the claim now, and we ought to sell it. Nope, I'm hanging on. Then let me sell my share, and you stay on here like you want to. Glenn, if you find someone else beside that Eric Benson to give you an offer for your share, I'll agree. But according to the papers we had drawn up, you know that neither one of us can sell out without the other's permission. And I won't agree to letting that smart Alec Benson become a partner of mine. I don't trust him. But you know I can't get another offer in time to catch that boat out of Dawson. What do you have to be so stubborn about Benson for? He'll even let you live alone in the cabin where we both live now. He said so. It ain't that, Glenn. You and I have been partners fair and square, even though we do argue now and then. But I just couldn't see having Benson own half of that claim. So it's no use discussing. You're the most pig-headed old codger I ever come up against. All you think about is yourself. Now, now, Glenn, take it easy. Calm down. Try to see it my way. It's time you try to see a few things my way for a change. We got a good thing in that claim, Glenn. And what's more, you forget the papers say that if one of us dies, the other gets the whole claim. <laughs> now, I'm much older than you, and someday you don't at all, maybe. That's not here nor there. I want to get out now, and Benson's waiting for his answer tonight. It won't hurt you any to let him own my share, and I I'm can... sorry, Glenn, but I don't see it your way. Get someone else. Someone I can be sure isn't buying it for Benson. And I'll give the permission to sell. But you can't make Benson a partner of mine, and that's final. You're a fool, John Day. And sooner or later, you'll be sorry you stood in my way on this. I'm leaving for the cabin. And if you never get there, that'll suit me just fine. Uh, 
A short time later, Eric Benson, who ran the gaming room at the cafe, was approached by one of his cronies. Eric, I gotta talk to you. Oh, hi, Leon. Eric, I heard something that might interest you. Now, wait a minute. Come over here. All right, let's hear it. Old John Day and Glenn White had an argument about you offering to buy Glenn's share of their claim. Day says he won't let Glenn sell to you or to anyone who tries to buy for you. Glenn went away in a huff. And I was afraid Day would hold out against me. And I want that half of the claim to begin to pay off. Before long, I could have got Day's half some way or other. Day just left the cafe alone, heading for their cabin on Nugget Creek. Has he got his dog team with him? Nope. But uh, him and Glenn were snowshoes to town. Why do you ask? I was just thinking. Oh, maybe you was thinking about what I heard the old man say. But if anything happened to him or to Glenn, the whole claim had belonged to the remaining partner. Yeah. Maybe I was thinking of that, Leon. It's beginning to snow outside. With the dog team, it'd be easy to catch up to the old man. That's right, it would. Glenn owned the whole claim. I could buy it from him cheap. He's anxious to get to the States. Maybe something will happen to the old man on the way to his cabin. Yeah. Maybe it will, huh? Let's go get the dog team and head that way. Snow is good for covering tracks. And if John Day is found dead on the trail, well, who'd ever know who did it, huh? <laughs> Let's go. It was dawn of the following day when Glenn White got up to answer a knock on the cabin door. He opened it to find Sergeant Preston and King standing outside. Well, Sergeant Preston. Good morning, Glenn. Sorry to get you up so early. Oh, that's all right. Come in. Thanks. Come on, King. Leaving Dawson City on a case, Sergeant? Not right away, Glenn. As a matter of fact, I came out here especially to see you. It's about John Day. About John? He didn't come home last night. But I figured he didn't want to start in the snowstorm, so he just stayed at the hotel for the night. They'll expect me to come after him with a dog team, I suppose. And it won't be the first time. You won't have to go after him, Glenn. You see, John won't be coming home. John Day is dead. What? Dead? Yes, he was found on the trail last night. His skull had been crushed by the butt of a gun. No. Oh. No, it can't be. Glenn, I wish I could believe you weren't acting for my benefit, but I'll have to take you to headquarters for questioning. Take me to headquarters for questioning? You... You mean they think... I did it? You and John had an argument in the cafe last night. You were overheard to threaten him, Glenn. You said something about his being sorry for standing in your way, that it would suit you if John never arrived at this cabin. I, I guess I did say something like that, but... Well, I was just mad, that's all. I didn't do it. I hope you didn't, Glenn. I honestly do. But I'll have to take you in on suspicion. Circumstances are against you. I... Uh... All right, Sergeant, I'll get ready and go with you. But somehow I've got to convince you that I didn't kill John Day. At headquarters, Glenn was questioned for some time, but maintained his innocence throughout the investigation. But in spite of his protests, he was held as the only suspect in the case. Just before he was led from the inspector's office, Glenn turned to Sergeant Preston. Please, Sergeant Preston, help me prove I didn't kill John. I know I'm quick-tempered and all... But you know I wouldn't do a thing like that. All the circumstances are against you, Glenn. You threatened him. You were angry at him. And what's more, you stood to gain by his death. But I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't do it. Glenn, I'll do everything I can to find proof that you didn't. But remember, it may mean I'll come up with additional proof that you did. I'm not afraid of that. I went right home and went to bed last night. Someone else killed John. If, as you say, someone else killed John Day, I'll do all I can to find that person. I promise you that, Glenn. Oh, thanks, Sergeant. Thanks a lot. All right, White. Time to go now. This way. Come along. I'm ready. I'm counting on you, Sergeant. You have to find that killer. I'll do my best. What do you really think, Sergeant? Well, Inspector... I've known Glenn White for some time. I'm inclined to believe him when he says he's not guilty of John's death. Everything's against him. All we need to charge him with murder is to get him to confess to it. Well, I don't think he'll ever confess, sir, because, as I just said, I believe he's innocent. In that case, get out and find the one who did kill Day, Sergeant. We can't keep this case open indefinitely. I have your permission to continue on the case, sir? Yes, Sergeant. Frankly, I'm convinced that Glenn White did kill John Day. But your further investigation of the case may bring up something 
that will help clinch things against him. So get to it and find out all you can. I got right on it, Inspector. Munging, you and I have work to do. It was early afternoon when Sergeant Preston and King arrived at the place where John Day's body had been found. The snow had stopped, but a cold wind was blowing. Okay. Hey, well, King, I guess the snowfall has stumped us as far as any tracks or scents concerned. John Day was on snowshoes. If someone did follow him from town, they probably used a dog team. Can't find any scent at all, eh, fellow? Might as well go back to Dawson. Maybe we can pick up something there. Let's go, King. All right. Hunting. Meantime, Eric Benson and his friend Leon were discussing the situation in the back room of the cafe. Eric, things went different than you expected. They picked up Glenn White and the Mounties are holding him. Yeah, I know. I didn't think they'd suspect him. But now that they have, it may turn out all right for me just the same. How do you figure that? Well, if they pin the murder on Glenn, he'll hang for it. In that case, the claim will be put up at auction and I can bid on it. Yeah. But couldn't he will it to someone before he died? Yeah. Guess he could at that. I just thought of something. What? I could suggest to that lawyer down the street to go see Glenn White and offer his services to fight the case. A lawyer might be able to get him off. You mean you're going to pay the lawyer? I hear Lewis Barker charges a lot to take a case. Oh, I'm not going to pay him. After the case is over, I can get Glenn to sell the mine to me. That'll give him enough money to pay the lawyer and to get back to the state like he wants to. Yeah, but remember, it isn't going to be easy for Barker to get Glenn off. It's a murder charge, you know. Yeah, but can they prove that Glenn did it? Nobody saw him do it. It's just circumstantial evidence. A smart lawyer like Barker can make a lot out of that. I'll see Barker tonight and suggest that he go see Glenn White. The following morning, the lawyer, Lewis Barker, was permitted to see Glenn White and had a long talk with him. After the lawyer left, Sergeant Preston went to the cell to speak to Glenn. Hello, Glenn. I see you had company. Hi, Sergeant. Lewis Barker, the lawyer, was here to see me. He offered to take my case and defend me. Oh? Barker had quite a reputation as a criminal lawyer in Seattle. I understand he charges terrific fees to take a case. How does he expect you to pay him? He knows I own half the claim on Nugget Creek. I see. I wonder how he knows about our agreement, though. Funny, I can't figure how he found that out. We kept the terms of our agreement a secret. I never told anybody except the police when you brought me here. They wouldn't have heard it from us. How'd he come to offer to take the case, do you know? Eric Benson sent him, he said. Eric wanted to buy my half of the mine. It was that fact that caused the argument in the cafe. I see. Did you and John mention the terms of your agreement that night in the cafe? Come to think of it, John reminded me of it, trying to get me to stay on as his partner. Barker, the lawyer, said Benson would buy the whole claim after he got me off. Eric Benson wanted that claim badly, didn't he? Well, he sure was anxious to get my share. That sets me thinking. Hold off on that lawyer a while, Glenn. Maybe you won't need him. Maybe King and I can find the real killer after all. We'll continue our story in just a moment. an alarm clock. Get up! Get up! I can't keep on ringing all day. Hey, who said that? Where? Who? Am I dreaming? No, I can't be. I just turned off the alarm. Yes, that's better. But, but you, an alarm clock talking. Yes, don't be alarmed. Well, well, that's impossible, ridiculous. But why? Who wants to just tick and ring all his life? Well, it might be monotonous at that. Sure, I work and work to wake you up. Well, I hate it, too. But you get to eat the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Ah, yes. That is the best part of getting up. A bowl of delicious, swell-tasting Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with fruit and milk or cream. Oh, if I could only taste them. They look so crisp and tender. Gee, I'll bet they melt in your mouth. You really would love Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. You know, they're the choice king-size, flavor-rich kernels exploded up to eight times normal size. They're actually shot from guns. Gee, shot from 
gun, so they're eight times bigger and better tasting. Man, oh man, how I could go for a heaping bowl full. That's how millions feel about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Oh, I don't mean talking alarm clocks. I mean you fellas and girls. For your breakfast treat tomorrow morning, be sure to enjoy Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. When Eric Benson's name was brought into the case in Sergeant Preston's talk with Glenn White, it set the Mountie thinking, yet he knew that his suspicions would amount to absolutely nothing without direct proof. After leaving Glenn at headquarters, Sergeant Preston walked slowly down the street with King at his side. They've got to think of something, fella. Some way to get the killer, or killers, to make a move. As the Mountie and Dog passed the newspaper office, Preston nodded to Mike Dennis, the publisher, who was busy inside. Seemingly, the sight of Mike had given Sergeant Preston a thought. He stopped a moment. Hmm. King, maybe the idea I have will work, but I'll need Mike's help to do it. Come on, we'll go see Mike right now. <laughs> A few minutes later, Sergeant Preston and King were inside, and the Mountie was talking earnestly to Mike. As I said, Mike, it's hard for me to believe that Glenn White killed John Day. I'm sort of toying with an idea that might prove he didn't, and also might bring the real killer to light. Sure, and tis hard for me to believe such a thing of Glenn White either, Sergeant. Tis right sorry I was to have to put his name in print in connection with that murder. Now, uh, about this idea, what is it? Well... I'll need your help in a way, Mike. Uh, you can count on Mike Dennis, Sergeant. You can be sure of that. As publisher of the Dawson Eagle, the people up here all stop to listen when you start to talk, thinking they'll hear some news. It's that that I'm counting on. Uh, what is it you want me to say, and where am I to do the talking? At the cafe where most of the men hang out, the Gold Nugget. When do you think you'll get a chance to go over there? Sure, and I can go now, if you say so. All right, now listen closely. This is what I want you to say when you get there. Later, Mike entered the cafe and strolled to the bar. Men in the Yukon were hungry for news. And when Mike Dennis appeared on the scene, they moved close enough to listen to his conversation. As he stood at the bar, they strained to hear what he was saying to a sourdough who stood next to him. Sure, it was a terrible thing that happened to poor old John Day, that it was. Well, a young fellow white will hang for what he did, I bet. No, no, I wouldn't be too sure, my friend. Uh, why not? He must have done it. Well, yeah, the Mounties think he did, don't they? Leastwise, they're still holding him at headquarters. That's right. I still wouldn't be too sure if he doesn't get off scot-free myself. Well, why do you say that, Mike? You got any reason for thinking so? Well, no, it is all rumor so far. Nothing I can print, you see. Just hearsay, more or less. Well, well, tell us what the rumor is, can't you, Mike? Yeah, what was it you heard, Mike? Yeah, let us in on it. Sure, sure come, come on. on. Sure, it isn't for my, the, the likes of Mike Dennis, a reputable newspaper publisher, no less, to be passing out rumors and having you all telling it as gospel truth before an hour's up. Oh. Oh. We aren't going to tell people you said it as being facts. We just want to know what rumors you heard, that's all. Oh. Well, it's like this. I only heard, mind you, that Lawyer Barker was thinking of taking the case. And what's more, I heard it hinted around that Barker can expect to win the case only by producing a witness who actually saw the killers following old John up the trail and recognized him. Well, why, you mean, why, you mean that Barker actually found such a witness? There you go, jumping at conclusions, as if I said it for a fact. Told you it was only hinted at. Yeah, but if you heard something about it, there must be something to it. But that'd mean they'll be grabbing someone else for that murder in place of Glenn White. Well, now, of course, if they really do find that Lawyer Barker has such a witness, and he can name whoever it was following old John, of course, it'll change things for Glenn White considerable. Guess I'll be going back to the paper before I get to say too much around here. Uh, so long, everybody. A few minutes after Mike left the cafe, Leon hurried into the other room to talk to Eric Benson. 
Eric, something has happened that isn't good. What are you talking about, Leon? Mike Dennis, the publisher, was just in the cafe. He said that lawyer Barker can produce a witness who saw John Day killed. Mike Dennis said that? Yeah, so it must be true. A dirty double-crosser. So Barker knows from that witness that it was us following Day, huh? Yeah. When that witness tells what he knows to the Mounties, they'll come asking us questions. I don't like the questions like they asked. Don't lose your nerve, you fool. They can't prove a thing. Maybe that witness even saw us stop John Day and, and, and crack him with that gun. Oh, shut up. Oh, what are we going to do? We just can't stay here waiting for the lawyer and the Mounties to make a move against us. Look, if Barker had taken his witness to the Mounties, they'd have been here before this. But they haven't. That means that Barker's waiting for some reason. Maybe he's going to get in touch with us. For what? To get bought off, that's for what? You know, Barker isn't above blackmail when he knows someone's got the dough to pay. But he'd be wanting money all the time. And what about that witness? What'll keep him quiet? I don't know. I don't know. A lot about this that needs explaining. We're going to see Barker at his office. Suppose he won't listen to what you have to say. Ah, he'll listen and like it. Here. Here's your gun. Yeah. Now take mine. That'll be the best way to argue with Barker if he tries to hold out on us. Now come on, let's get going. Diagonally across the street, in the window of the newspaper office, Sergeant Preston with King standing beside him watched as Eric and Leon came out of the Gold Nugget Cafe and headed down the street. Preston called to Mike. Mike, look there. <laughs> Quiet, King. Uh, looks like Eric Benson and that crony of his. Yes, they're heading toward the lawyer's office. Might be what we were hoping for. We'll go now, King. Uh, uh, wait, no, I'm coming along with you. All right, Mike. Things turn out, I can use a reliable witness, but let's get going. Hurry. I, I'm ready, Sergeant. I'll go around into the back of the office. Come on, King. Eric Benson and Leon hurriedly approached the office of Lawyer Barker. <sighs> Eric, I don't like the way things have turned out. I'm not too happy about it either. But stop worrying, will you? I can deal with Barker. Maybe we ought to get the dog team and hit the trail away from Dawson while no, we can. No, no, I got it figured that nothing's been said to the Mounties yet. We'll see that nothing is said. Yeah, but it'll be all over town about Barker having that witness after Mike Dennis blatting about it at the cafe. Barker will have to deny it, that's all. Come on, here's his office. Hi, Barker. Well, Eric, what brings you here? You ought to know. Came to find out about that witness you found that saw who was following John Day the other night. Witness? Yeah. What are you talking about? See, Mike Dennis said he heard it, but Barker's trying to play like he don't know what we're talking Shut about. Shut up, Leon. Let me handle this. I hear you plan to get Glenn White off by bringing in a witness who will steer the Mounties to someone else. What's got into you? Glenn White hasn't even agreed to let me handle his case yet. He will when you bring out that witness, though, won't he? If I had found such a witness, he could go straight to the police and tell what he saw. Then Glenn White wouldn't need a lawyer. Mm. In that case, it'd be more to your advantage to keep that witness quiet and do some large-scale blackmailing for a while, huh? Just why are you so interested? Or should I say upset? Over the thought that I might have found a man who saw Day kill. See that, Eric? It's true. You've got to do something. Benson, I haven't been a well-known criminal lawyer without being able to observe people's actions and draw fairly correct conclusions. Just what do you mean by that? What I mean is that from the way you're acting and also your friend Leon here, I'd be almost tempted to say you both have something to hide. Like the killing of John Day, for instance. He does know. Yeah, sure he knows. But it won't do him much good. Wait, wait, hold on. Put away that gun. No, Barker, you're taking us to that witness you have in hiding. If there were such a man, I'd be a fool to take you to him. You'd kill us both. But there isn't any such person. You couldn't have known unless there was. You told me yourselves. I don't know what it was that gave you the idea or who it was. But it's brought to light the real killers of John Day. Glenn White won't need a lawyer after all. You tell us who that man is and where he is or I'll put a bullet in you right now. I told you there isn't any such person. Ah. Oh. In that case, since you found out about us, this is it. As Eric, with an insane light in his eyes, raised his gun and pointed it at the lawyer, the back door flew open. Oh, hold me there, you. I'm out here. Sergeant Preston. As Eric spoke Preston's name, he suddenly dropped alongside the desk still, and pressed Parker. his gun to Barker's side. Then he spoke. Now, one move from you, Preston, or that publisher with you, and I'll kill Barker. He means it, Sergeant. I know. Mike and I listened at the back door. We heard what was said, so I know they're both killers. Leon stood with his eyes glued on Preston. The sight of the Mountie had filled him with frozen fear. But not so, Eric. Barker's coming with us, Preston. We're going out the front door. We're using him as a shield. If 
you try to follow, we'll plug him. Eric's eyes never left Preston's. Neither he nor Leon saw the creeping gray-white figure of King as the intelligent dog moved off to one side along the wall and then crept closer and closer to the crouching figure of Eric. Once more, Eric spoke. Come on, Barker. In front of me. And we'll go back to the front door. Leon, you go behind me. Even as Eric and Barker started to their feet, the great husky sprang forward with a deep-throated growl. King grabbed Eric's gun arm, knocking the man to the floor. At the same time, Preston ran forward. Come here, Leon. I'll take your gun. Help! Get him away! Help! Easy, King. Down, fella. Watch them, boy. Great St. Patrick, what a dog. He sure saved the day first this time, says I. <laughs> That's right, Mike. You all right, Barker? Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm all right. Lucky thing for me, you were outside. They would have shot me. I know. I'm afraid I'll have to confess that that was part of a plan Mike and I cooked up. What? A plan? <laughs> Soon I went to the cafe and blabbed a bit about maybe you found a witness who saw the killers. They hightailed it over here to face you down about it. <laughs> so that was why they came steaming in here all excited, huh? Well, your plan certainly worked, Sergeant. Yes, we followed them and waited outside the back door. Thought we had everything under control, but it worked out all right. I say it certainly did, Sergeant. We heard them say they killed John Day. And the lawyer heard it, too. That's right. Now I'll be glad to testify against Hadn't you. it been for that dog. I counted upon that dog, Benson. King hates criminals as much as I do. You can't prove anything against him. I'll take you in for attempted murder right now. I'm sure you'll talk about the John Day killing when the proper time comes. The Queen's government will have a case, Sergeant. That's right. As far as King and I are concerned, I think we can say this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Listen, fellows and girls... Tie a little string around Mother's finger tomorrow before she goes shopping. Tell her it's just a reminder to get Quaker-puffed wheat and Quaker-puffed rice. Because these king-size, ready-to-eat premium grains of rice or wheat are so swell-tasting. Pour out a heaping bowlful, top with fruit and milk or cream. And man, oh man, did you ever taste anything so crisp, so tender, so downright delicious. And no wonder... They're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. For the weekend, be sure and get Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Look for the famous big red and blue Quaker packages. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the scent of blood. When King and I heard a shot from the other side of Ghost Canyon, we rushed to the spot, as I suspected there might be trouble. But when we arrived on the scene, two men told us that nothing was wrong. I might have believed their story if King hadn't caught the scent of blood and thus uncovered a plot which very nearly cost me my life. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.